Welcome to our service for Sunday the 10th of April, Palm Sunday. We start with the hymn, All Glory, Lord and Honour to Thee, Redeemer King. Let us pray. Our living Lord, we thank you that we can come before you with open and receptive hearts, recognising your many mercies to us, recognising the many gifts you have given us. You are Lord of all. Your word spoke the world into existence, and you uphold it and sustain it by your wisdom and power. And we praise you for all the evidences of your renewing power that we see around us in this time of spring. We thank you for the coming of your Son amongst us and for the way he set his face faithfully to go in the path set out before him. Today on Palm Sunday, we remember the rapturous welcome he was given as he entered Jerusalem and how he accepted the praise of the people. Yet we recognise too that he knew he had to tread the costly path to rejection and the cross to win our salvation. He took the way of the servant king in love for us and all the world. Lord, at times we feel unworthy of your love, but we thank you that your grace and love extends to us regardless of our faults and failings. You welcome us with open arms, summoning us to walk in your way, the servant way, and leave behind our old self-centered ways. Forgive us our failings and renew us in your service, that we might go forward with joy fixing our eyes upon Jesus who has gone before us and also journeys with us. You call us to receive your Spirit into our lives, receive your risen presence and to make you our Lord. 
that we might go forward in your strength into the days that lie ahead. And so we would pray and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. We come now to our Bible readings, and our Old Testament reading is taken from Psalm 24, reading from verses 7 to 10, hearing it from the New International Version. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. And then turning to the New Testament, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 to 40, hearing it from the Good News Bible. As Jesus came near Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you. As you go in, you will find a colt tied up that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks you why you are untying it, tell them that the master needs it. They went on their way and found everything just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying it? The master needs it, they answered, and they took the colt to Jesus. Then they threw their cloaks over the animal and helped Jesus get on. As he rode on, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near Jerusalem, at the place where the road went down the Mount of Olives, the large crowd of his disciples began to thank God and praise him in loud voices for all the great things that they had seen. God bless the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Then some of the Pharisees in the crowd spoke to Jesus. Teacher, they said, command your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answered, I tell you that if they kept quiet, the stones themselves will start shouting.
Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. So the psalmist writes, and then he adds the question, Who is this King of glory? That is our question on Palm Sunday, as we remember a day of celebration and palm waving, and as we begin to look to the days that followed on from it. Today we look on a man called Jesus riding into Jerusalem, and we ask, Who is this King of glory? And today on Palm Sunday he certainly looks like a King of glory. Cheering crowds, palm branches, cloaks spread on the road, a triumphal entry into the royal city, Jerusalem. What a scene of joy and triumph it is, fulfilling the ancient prophecy, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Zechariah 9 verse 9 But by the end of the week, instead of a triumphal entry, there is a tearful exit. The daughters of Jerusalem who were rejoicing on Sunday are weeping on Friday as the King of Glory is led out of town in shame and sorrow. Who is this King of Glory? That week was so pivotal to the Christian story that the Gospels dedicate between quarter and nearly half of their length to describing the events of that week. And yet, if we only come to church on Sundays, we can all too easily jump from celebrating Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday to the celebration of the Resurrection on Easter Sunday and miss out on all the momentous events leading up to the cross. That is why it is so important to try and attend a Good Friday service and journey through the intervening days. On Palm Sunday, Jesus is acclaimed as the Messianic King. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. On Friday, he is accused of claiming to be that King. We found this man misleading our nation, saying that he himself is Christ, a King. And Jesus doesn't deny it. Are you the King of the Jews? You have said so. Luke 23 verse 3. Who is this King of glory? Soldiers array him in splendid clothing, only to beat him up and mock him. How is he a King of glory? Where is the glory in being nailed to a cross and having a sign placed over one's head saying, This is the King of the Jews? No garments strewn before him, now only his own garments stripped from him. Strange king indeed. On Sunday he rides in triumph on the way to glory. On Friday he staggers, condemned, on the way of sorrows, the way of the cross, and darkness, and degradation. The world would as soon forget about this king, this puzzling man, or remake him into an image that they are more comfortable with. They are inclined to put him on the shelf, out of mind, so that they can get on with their lives, their busy, distracted, no need for God lives. Instead of cheering crowds, or hostile, hostile crowds either for that matter, now there are just busy crowds bustling crowds, too busy to be bothered and too bored to care crowds, overloaded with information but starved for wisdom, all too busy yet filling their lives with little of substance. Who is this King of Glory? Don't bother me, I'm not interested. Should we shed a here for forgotten, neglected Jesus? No, we should shed a tear for ourselves and our society. 
the folly of those who think they can escape judgment and have no need for God's mercy and his Messiah. What will be their support to enable them to stand on that day of God's judgment? Will it be their inherent goodness? Or that they are as good as the next person? Such support stand for nothing. They need rather to take hold of the servant king, the one who came to seek and to save the lost, the one who so embraced our lostness that he cried out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet who went on to give the victory cry, It is finished. The cross was a victory and not a defeat. Through it Jesus disarmed the dark powers of this lost world and became our Saviour if we would receive him as our King and lean on him. The one who can save us from our sins and brokenness and open up for us a new and glorious future, a future we could never gain access to through our own abilities. Both Sunday and Friday were part of God's plan. The colt that had never been ridden before, and the tomb that had never been used before, they had both been set apart for a special purpose and a special person. The plan all along was for Jesus to ride in glory into Jerusalem, and his glory, God's glory, would be seen and shown and brought to fulfillment precisely in Jesus going to the cross. The cross and the tomb were part of the plan. Indeed, the heart of God's plan for you and me. Jesus was and is the King who suffered and died for us. There are more clues in the Gospels as to why he could fulfill that role. Pilate, the judge, said of Jesus in Luke chapter 23, I find no guilt in this man. Then a second time he said to Jesus, his accusers, I have examined him in your presence, and I have not found him guilty of any of the crimes you accuse him of. Nor did Herod find him guilty, for he sent him back to us. There is nothing that this man has done to deserve death. Then a third time, I cannot find anything he has done to deserve death. Even the thief on the cross saw this truth about Jesus. This man has done nothing wrong. And the Roman centurion also, certainly this man was innocent. All three spoke truer than they realized. Not only was Jesus not guilty of any crime, not only was he innocent by the world's standards, there was no sin and guilt in him. Whereas we cannot manufacture a verdict like that for ourselves, we have all fallen short in countless ways. We have sinned against God and, and others in thought and word and deed. We have made false gods for ourselves, worshipping, worshipping the idols of our own making, our own opinions and ideas of what is right and wrong. Only the one true God can deliver us, and he has come amongst us to do just that. Who is the King of glory? The psalmist tells us, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. The Holy Son of God, true God from eternity, born of the Virgin Mary, this Jesus, God in the flesh. Jesus, the God-man Saviour. He is the King of glory, who saves us from sin and death. Let us bow at his feet and enthrone him in our lives. is love unknown my 
Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown, that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die? Let us pray. 
Lord, we thank you that you freely took the path that led to the cross for our sake and for our salvation. You did not try and compromise and take the easy path and let the world squeeze you into its mould, but you steadfastly set your face on a path that led you into conflict with the dark forces reigning in this world. And we praise you that when they thought they had defeated you, you rose victorious to open up a way for us all, out of darkness into light, out of defeat into victory. May we embrace you as Lord, so that we may receive the fruits of your victory in our own lives. Help us to make space for you in our lives, to encounter you as our Saviour and friend. How we need your transforming love to do a work of healing in this world. How we need to centre our lives on you, the Prince of Peace, and allow you to reign as King in our lives. You are the only one who can heal our broken world and bring a true peace into people's lives. As we learn from you how to be a forgiving people, so help us to go out in your strength to be agents of change and bringers of hope. You call us to be a praying people and to pray for justice in our world and to pray down your power and strength into situations of darkness and fear. And so we pray for the Ukraine and for all those whose lives have been impacted by the present conflict. We pray for all those suffering oppression or persecution or exploitation throughout the world, praying that they may be set free from their trials and know your blessing upon their lives. May your kingdom come and your will be done throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. His splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome. Into your light, make way, make way for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, and let His kingdom be. He comes the broken hearts to heal, the prisoners to free. The dead shall hear, the lame shall dance, the
And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.